Hi, so this video I really want to talk about cleaning because I think it's been noticeable that I haven't been cleaning and I want to explain why that is. So firstly, it's very, very hard to clean a lot when you have young children who are running around making a mess. So I find that I'm just cleaning up from the regular mess and it's very hard to get to Pesach cleaning. But also because Pesach cleaning is a very specific type of cleaning. And I'm going to tell you a little bit about what Pesach cleaning is and what it isn't. Our first stop, the kitchen. Any items of food which are chametz, or any cupboards which contain chametz or dishes that you're not gonna use on Pesach, you don't need to clean them. All you need to do is close them and seal them and maybe put a notice on that this is not for Pesach and that's it. You don't need to clean inside all your cupboards. A cupboard which you are using for Pesach, you do need to clean. Ovens and other cooking appliances, these need to be cleaned really, really well. We'll get to that in another video. Fridges and freezers, these you really do need to clean well and all the pictures and decorations on the front of the fridge and the freezer, I take those off for Pesach too, because we tend to touch those when we're around food. If you don't ever take food upstairs, and you're sure of that, you don't need to clean upstairs in your house. Now it might be tempting to sort through your clothing and get rid of last year's season and, and see what you need, but that's spring cleaning, it's not Pesach cleaning, you can do that in December. If you don't take food upstairs, then you don't need to clean upstairs. Unfortunately, this year, we have a two-year-old, so we do have to clean upstairs. Okay, Sfarim, any type of books. If you bring them to a table where you're eating, then you should shake them out and give them a wipe. But if you don't bring them to a table and you don't eat over them, then you don't need to clean them. Curtains? No, you don't eat on your curtains unless you use it as a tablecloth. Tables and chairs. We are eating near tables and chairs, so it's good to give them a good clean. And then you cover the table with plastic or paper and then put on a tablecloth so that we have a double layer. Okay, toys. Last year, I remember saying that we did not bring food near toys, so we felt comfortable that we did not need to clean all our toys. But life has changed in a year. With lockdown, with a two-year-old, sometimes toys do get near food and it's really, really hard to keep on top of. So this year, what we're going to do is select a few toys for one week. We're gonna clean those toys and then the rest of the toys, we're gonna to close off and we're not gonna use for the week of Pesach. Because to be honest, I just can't face going through and cleaning every single toy. Children. It's really important to clean these for Pesach. Other chametz hotspots that really need to be cleaned well are things like buggies and car seats and cars, but also bags. Making an opportunity to clean all your bags, handbags, backpacks is really important because often that's where crumbs are left. So here's a problem we've never had before pet food. So most pet food is chametz and it's better to stop using it a few days before Pesach to give the pets a chance to eat any scraps that are remaining around their coop or their hutch and um, and then to introduce the kasha le Pesach pet food beforehand. It can be kidneyous which is helpful so our chickens are going to eat corn. They're not performing today. And finally medicines. Going through all your medicine cabinets, taking out the chametz medicine, putting it in a separate place for the duration of Pesach. Any medicine which you're regularly taking, you can look up online to check that it's kasha le Pesach. Most medicines are, but some aren't, so it is worth checking in good time. <laughs> Tafun ba